Amen. You may be seated. Let us all say Amen. The text for today comes from the Isaiah passage, the classic story of Isaiah in the temple, chapter 6, verses 1 and 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I, Isaiah, saw the Lord seated on a throne, and then I heard a voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? The subject, as you see, is a question for us all this morning. Have you heard from the Lord lately? Ours is a very noisy world, isn't it? And it is all so confusing. For we are all bombarded by so many ads on TV and on the radio and social media platforms. AI and TikTok and all the others are shouting loudly to catch our attention and control our conduct. And so the dilemma for us is, which voice are we listening to? In our country, that is so polarized and everything is so politicized, be in our world with all of the unheard of climate disasters daily. I mean, did you see all those tornadoes in the Midwest last week? not to speak of the atrocities in Gaza, in Palestine, in Ukraine, and at our very southern borders right next to us. Even in our church, in this post-COVID time, the seemingly unattainable goals that we are supposed to be aiming for to ensure that we live out the gospel of Jesus Christ seems so hard to achieve, doesn't it? And so the question for us today is that in the midst of all the disturbing push and pull for attention and influence, are we listening to the voice of the Lord of all life. And I don't know if you know anything more annoying and frustrating than to be talking to somebody and to realize that they're not listening to you at all. I often wonder what God thinks of us. So self-centered we are, so sinful and selfishly preoccupied with power and plenty and the petty instead of listening to the voice of the Lord. For God is everywhere, active and engaged in all situations, right? And God's voice is never silent in all creation. But oh, how we need the open eye and the keen, sensitive ear to hear and to see what God is doing and what the spirit of the living God is challenging us to recognize and how we ought to respond. 
I remember years ago how the famous writer Elizabeth Barrett Browning in one of her famous poems spoke of earth crammed with heaven and every common bush afire with God, but only he who sees takes off his shoes. She was talking about the dramatic confrontation that Moses had with the spirit of the living God at the burning bush. You know the story in Exodus chapter 3. There he was on the, the plains of southern Midian, tending to his father-in-law Jethro's flock. And he, out of the blue, out of the fire, in fact, he heard the voice saying, Moses, Moses, do not come near, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. And friends, I want to say to us this morning that the significance of all that experience really is this, that another shepherd would have heard nothing, absolutely nothing. But Moses heard the unmistakable voice of the God of his salvation. And that is the real miracle. Not the burning bush that was on fire, but that was not being consumed by the fire but the ensuing revelation of God's presence in the everyday life that he was leading, taking care of his father-in-law Jethro's flock. Secondly, the recognition of God's power to transform timidity into triumph over all the excuses to do nothing at all that Moses was responding to God. And especially third, the reward of God's promise to be with him amidst all the complexities of life and all the, com uh, the, the complaints of all the people he was called to lead. When the Lord, the voice, out of that burning fire said, I am Yahweh. I will be with you. Stop complaining about not being adequate and be prepared to deal with all the challenges that are ahead. My name is Yahweh. I will be with you when you need me. When you go down to Egypt and have to deal with Pharaoh, I will be there with you. And when you go into the wilderness, as I promise you, you will be leading those people out of Egypt into the wilderness and all the problems that you have to deal with folk, I will be with you. That was the reward of God's great promise to be with him. And that, my friends, is what caused this hesitating shepherd to make a decisive commitment of his life to the God who promised, I will be there with you. You can count on that. That's my name, that's my nature. One whom you can count on to be there with you, come what may. Do you know what I'm talking about this morning? So that Moses was transformed into a new man, from a loser to become a liberator of ancient Israel. And so can we. Do you believe that this morning? Wasn't it the same thing that happened to Isaiah in the critical year when the young king Uzziah died? And in response to the dramatic confrontation of the awesome God in the temple where he was worshiping, he too made a decisive commitment like Moses when he said, Lord, here I am, send me. The question for us today is, have you heard from the Lord lately? Asking us, what are we doing here at Laley and how are we doing to ensure that the pastor search goes well and that you don't have to depend on a feeble, old, retired, 80-year-old minister coming in and going out? 
How are we responding to the spirit of the living God? That's what I'm asking us this morning. Isaiah responded and he said this, Lord, I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, and mine are hardly any better. I see that the priests are in the temple offering the sacrifices as usual, and the people are going through the motions to worship with proper piety and putting their shekels in the offering plates. But as your prophet, Lord, burdened with the loss of your charismatic, promising young king, Uzziah. He was like a, a Kennedy kind of a person, you know, with all the promise and flair and charisma that they needed at that time in ancient Israel. And the prophet said, as your prophet, I'm burdened with the loss of one who had so much promise. And I see you, Lord, lifted up, and the awesome power of being in your presence in the temple. And I hear you asking the question, whom shall I send now that Uzziah has died and is taken, and all the promise and the possibilities that he represented is taken from us? Whom shall I send to represent me and the promise of a, a grand future? And Isaiah, right there in the temple, said, Lord, I have no choice but to say, here I am, send me. Is that your response to the gospel this morning? Friends, let me end by saying to you that engaging in worship of the, the God who is the awesome one always makes a difference when we take it seriously. It sure did so dramatically when it got Moses' attention at the burning bush and he made a commitment there to go and be the liberator that God intended for him to become. It sure made a difference, I'm saying, for Isaiah in the temple when Uzziah died so unexpectedly and it always challenges everyone from the pulpit to the pew to make a decisive commitment of themselves to the God of our salvation who keeps on saying to us, come what may, know that I will be there with you when you need me. So don't worry about failure and floundering and, and all your insignificance in the light of all the problems of the world. I will be there with you to help you and to uphold you and cause you to worship and th give thanks to the God of your salvation. Do you hear what I'm saying this morning? I'll be there with you when you need me. My name is Yahweh. I call that divine companionship. Like the Samaritan woman at the well experienced at high noon in that drama that John tells in chapter 4, when Jesus lovingly but firmly confronted her cultural, her religious, and personal hang-ups and said to her straight, after all the chatter, go call your husband. Awestruck and stunned at the love that would not let her go, and on and on, John says, the nameless woman left her water jar and went back to the city hurriedly and shouted out as the first evangelist, notice, a woman, a Samaritan woman, first evangelist. She ran back to the city to all those had, who had despised her and kept her at a distance. And she shouted out and said, come see a man who told me everything that I needed to know. He's got to be the Messiah. And so I say to us this morning, you can't have a dramatic confrontation with the Lord and not make a decisive commitment like Moses did, like Isaiah did, like this woman at the well did on that 
significant occasion. And notice how the story ends. With the life-changing, reassuring promise of divine companionship with her. No wonder Sam Cooke, you remember him, don't you? You know that before he became a pop singer, he was part of a group and he led the group called the Grace Thrillers in the church. And he immortalized her story, the story of the woman at the well. And this is what the first stanza of that hymn that they sang said. Jesus gave her water that was not in the well. She went away singing, and she came back bringing others to the water that was not in the well. Isn't that fabulous? So I ask us this morning, have you heard from the Lord lately? And what is your response going to be? Let us stand and sing the beautiful hymn of response that is printed in our hymn book. Here I am, Lord, send me. I, the Lord. Just 
satisfied. Let us all raise our hands and sing, Here I am. see us, the hands that we have raised, saying, here I am, each one of us. You take note of our commitment, and you promise to be with us through all the changing scenes of life. Help us to claim that and to believe that with all our hearts this day and every day that you give us. For we ask it all and give you thanks for your presence now and always. In the name of Christ, our loving Lord. Amen.